Good afternoon. Welcome to the Lord's House on this day. A few announcements for you. First of all, as we do every week, we encourage you to sign in on the fellowship pads which we found towards the central aisle. I also would like to remind you that uh, we are looking for sign-ups for the Vacation Bible School at St. Peter's, our sister congregation. Those sign-ups are available at the link that's in the bulletin. And then, as well, we have uh, church council and boards. Boards are at 6 o'clock, and then church council is at 7 on Tuesday. A couple other announcements in the bulletin, uh, so please pay special attention to that. Uh, this time I'd like to ask a member of our youth group mission trip uh, over the past couple of weeks to come forward uh, and tell us a little bit about that. Grant Bartell. Thank you. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to go on to the youth group trip to Louisville this year, um, and it was phenomenal. Uh, we started off with a long van ride. That was fun. But when we got there, it was all uphill from there. So we started Saturday. We just kind of unpacked, got used to where we were, and uh, got comfortable with each other. Then on Sunday, we started off, of course, with church, and that was very cool to see the sanctuary there where we were fortunate enough to stay uh, at Concordia, uh, Louisville. After church, we went over to the mountains in Kentucky and did some rock climbing. That was a lot of fun. So it was our little, as Pastor Jackson said, pre-ward for all the hard work we were going to do, and it was. On the topic of hard work, uh, Monday and Tuesday that week, we spent a lot of time at a place called Lakeview Springs. And now it's kind of like their Camp Luther of sorts down there. And it's, they're making a new property which is meant for family camping. And we got to help a lot with renovating their old buildings, organizing, and it was a lot of work. Uh, it was warm, but when we end, the people we were helping were amazed with the amount of work we got to do there. Uh, we also got a chance to go see a beautiful restored home from one of the volunteers there and got to swim in a creek and that was a lot of fun as well. Wednesday, we were able to go uh, to uh, another congregation in Louisville, uh, Resurrection. And there, it's um, a smaller congregation, and we were able to help with some programming and some up general upkeep around there. Uh, and then Thursday and Friday were special to me. They really were. We were fortunate enough to go to a place called Cedar Lake Lodge, and there it's a... Uh, place for people with de developmental disabilities. And the key part about it, though, is it's centered in Christ. So we were able to see all of the daily interactions and how they really emphasize on both keeping uh, everyone active and uh, enjoying their time, but also keeping it centered on the faith. So on Friday, uh, before we departed, um, we were fortunate enough to be able to participate in a chapel service. And that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen, is you could see all the uh, residents there participating along with us as we went through the little chapel service, sang along. That was amazing. Uh, overall, though, it was so much fun. But most importantly, I know that I was able to do it because of the support from Youth group is not able to do what it does without the support of the congregation. And for that, I thank you very much. It was such a good time. It really helped me with my faith. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. I do have to say uh, it was probably one of our, our most successful mission trips we've run, and that's saying quite a bit. We've had uh, quite a good history with these. Uh, so certainly uh, next year, we already have the dates picked out in late July. I believe it's, uh, I can't remember the dates, I believe like July 24th roughly is when we're going to depart for our mission trip uh, to New York City next year in 2024. So mark your calendars, even if you've gone on a band trip to New York City or a choir trip, going with Pastor Chris is a whole different experience than that. So. Uh, we'll continue then with our hymn of invocation number 901.
Open now thy gates of beauty, Zion. Let me enter there, where my soul in joyful duty waits for him who answers prayer. Oh, how blessed is this place, filled with solace, light, and grace. Gracious God, I come before Thee, come Thou also unto me, where we find Thee and adore Thee, there a heaven on earth must be. To my heart, O oh, enter thou. Let it be thy temple now. Here thy praise is gladly chanted. Here thy seed is duly sown. Let my soul, where it is planted, bring forth precious sheaves alone, so that all I hear may be fruitful unto life in me. Thou my faith increase and quicken, let me keep thy gift divine. Howsoe'er temptations thicken, may thy word still o'er me shine. As my guiding star through life, as my comfort in all strife, Please rise for confession and absolution on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand but with you, there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, and holy baptism, you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, and that you daily and richly forgive us our sins, and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, Enliven our faith and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll continue then with our entrance hymn number 601. All who believe and are baptized shall see the Lord's salvation. Baptized into the death of Christ, they are a new creation. Through Christ's redemption they shall stand among the glorious heavenly band of every tribe and nation. 
With one accord, O oh God, we pray, grant us your Holy Spirit. Help us in our infirmity, through Jesus' blood and merit. Grant us to grow in grace each day, that by this sacrament we may eternal life inherit. We can see with the Kyrie on page 204. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone our Lord Most High. In God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20. Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side, denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps you will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. 
They will be greatly shamed. They will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 4 today is the 91st Psalm. It can be found in the very beginning of the hymnals. We'll speak it responsibly by half verse through verse 10. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, No plague come near your tent. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because you are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Thanks be to God that you, who are once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you are committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness." I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. The wages of sin is death. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father is child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. The one who endures to the end will be saved. And they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. They have called the master of the house Beelzebul. How much more will they malign those of his household? So no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. Well, I tell you in the dark, see in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, number 659. Lord of our life and God of our salvation, star of our night and hope of every nation, hear and receive your church's supplication. Lord God Almighty, see round your ark the hungry billows curling, see how your foes their banners are Despite their fiery darts are hurling, O Lord, preserve us. Lord, be our light when worldly darkness veil us. Lord, be our shield when earthly armor fails us, and in the day when hell itself assails us, grant us your peace, Lord. Peace in our hearts where sinful thoughts are raging. Peace in your church, our troubled souls are swaging. Peace when the world is endless war is waging peace in your heaven in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit 
Amen. Just one quick note to our coming We're just going to do that hymn as uh, our conclusion for today, not the introduction as we talked about. All right. Uh, today, we are going to be taking up our epistle lesson as we talk about availing ourselves of the desires, the holy desires which come from God so that we would be weapons of righteousness. Um, when we talk about weapons, uh, very often people have just fundamentally negative views or even fundamentally positive views about weapons. But the, the plain fact of the matter is that they are morally neutral. So, uh, take for example, uh, one of my dear rifles sitting in the locker at home. Apart from a human agent, all it is is wood and metal. And that's all it is. But, when it is used by a good human agent, it can be used for great good. So through a deer rifle, for example, in my own family, for example, it's been a means of providing food for our family. Venison, right? That is a morally good use to which it has been put. Uh, to me, there's actually even more important uses than that. It's a, it's a vehicle to just get out in nature. Um, basically, when I go deer hunting, for example, the, the great benefit is just being out in the trees and in the fresh air and under the sun. And it's a good thing I feel that way because uh, most of the time I don't have that great of luck when I'm deer hunting. It's a vehicle for bonding with my family. You know, through the use of this, I've spent hours and hours with my kids and the blind or when we're out practicing, getting ready. It's a way that we've grown in a bond together. right? So that deer rifle has been put to these good ends. On the other hand, certainly it could be used towards evil ends. Absolutely. What matters is the human agent using it, whether it's used for good or whether it's used for evil. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are a weapon. And there's a war on. And that weapon could be used for either side, for good or for evil, for righteousness, or unrighteousness. And there's a war on not only outside of us, but also inside of you to determine who is the agent that will use that weapon, which is yourself. Will it be your old sinful nature? Or will it be the new man who has arisen through your faith in Christ Jesus? who has won for you the forgiveness of sins. I don't usually like to do this because uh, I, I don't like to put myself forward as some great biblical scholar, but I'd like to actually offer you a somewhat slightly different translation for the, the first couple of verses of our epistle lesson today. All right. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal selves. Right, so bodies is a fine interpretation there. But I actually think selves, our whole selves, not just our bodies, but also our intellectual capacities and capabilities. Our whole selves is what's being talked about there. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal selves to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members, or rather, yeah, do not present your members or your capacities to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. The word that's translated there as instruments, the Greek word for that is hopla. Certainly sometimes it can be used to talk about just instruments in general, like gardening tools and things like that. 
But more commonly, and I think this is what's in view here, it's better translated as weapons. In fact, a Greek word for, uh, for a warrior was hoplite. And that's after a hoplon, a singular weapon, the sword that was bared, born by them. So to present, do not present your capacities to sin as weapons for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your capacities to God as weapons for righteousness. You yourselves have innate power, Ability, this is different for all of us. You have intelligence, you have skills, physical strength. And all of us have been given different kinds of capacities and different measures and of different kinds. Praise be to God for this. That of His infinite wisdom, He has, he has raised up a people, many people with many different capacities and abilities. But those capacities and abilities themselves are morally neutral. They can be used either for good or for evil. I'm always struck, for example, at the work ethic in the intelligence of many kinds of criminals. Now we usually think of intelligence and work ethic as fundamentally good, right? We, good, strong, hard-working Midwesterners, we like hard work. And we like intelligence too. But sometimes when I'm reading about, for example, white-collar criminals and these vast conspiracies they work up, it takes a ton of work. It takes a ton of intelligence. These are people that work harder than most of us and are more intelligent than most of us except they are used using that intelligence and that hard work ethic towards evil ends. And so it is. With us as well. Whatever gifts we have received from God in the created order, these can be used either towards His ends, as weapons of righteousness, or they can be used towards evil ends as weapons of unrighteousness. And the problem is, is that within us is another kind of war. The war between the new redeemed nature in Christ and our old sinful nature with its passions and its desires which will win out there are many approaches that have been taken with regards to uh, the sinful desires that we humans have and just desires in general religious thinkers philosophers over the ages have noted that our, one of our fundamental problems in this world is not outside of us, but inside of us. The passions and desires that rule over us and that sometimes lead us into all kinds of problems. All kinds of self-destructive activities and activities that are destructive to others as well. Now there are four options that are usually given with regards to these destructive desires within us. We're going to talk about those four options. We're going to contrast that with the option that Paul lays out here, which is radically different. So the first option that's given today, this is a, a very strange and unusual option. It's an option that almost nobody throughout history has put forward. But it's an option which is 
particularly pronounced and particularly popular today. And this is the option of just denying the problem whatsoever. So under this viewpoint, if you have a desire or a passion, this viewpoint says there's nothing in particularly wrong or evil or ill-conceived or disordered in any fashion or, or any desire that you have. The only problem that could be with any passion or any desire that you have is if it causes you to do something which would restrict somebody else's pursuit of their passions or somebody else's pursuit of their desires. But other than that, there's no desire, no passion that could come up out of your heart which is in particularly evil. We see the results of this viewpoint all around us. The viewpoint which says that it can't be wrong if it feels good. The viewpoint which affirms people's desires to be something fundamentally different than the way God created them. I won't dig into that one too much here. Today at least. The viewpoint a materialism, which says that if you can't afford that toy that you want, well, that shouldn't be an object to you having it, but just simply take out crippling debt in order to get the toys that you desire. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a fundamentally corrupt way of understanding our human desires and our human passions. And, and ultimately, even while it seems nice and it seems affirming, it's ultimately destructive and hurtful and harmful. This viewpoint which says that there's no bad desire or no bad passion is leading all kinds of people into all sorts of self-destructive activities and activities which hurt not only themselves, but others as well. Let us put aside this view, which says that there's no desire or no passion of the heart, which is fundamentally wrong. The second option, and, and this is really a second and third option with a commonality behind it. And uh, this is the view which says that uh, passions in general, human passions in general, are fundamentally hurtful, fundamentally harmful, and therefore we need to be utterly freed from any kind of desire or any kind of passion whatsoever. So, there are two common ways that uh, throughout history, philosophers and religious thinkers have, have sought to put human passions down under your feet. And the first is to try to rule over passions, rule over our desires by means of human intellect. So, for example, in the ancient world, there was a philosophical school called Stoicism. And there was a, a great Stoic philosopher, a man by the name of Marcus Aurelius. He was actually also even a Roman emperor. And he sought to help his disciples to rule over their passions by means of the intellect. One of the greatest obstacles to this, by the way, that Marcus Aurelius saw was a love of music. Interestingly enough, because there is nothing that stirs the human passions and the human desires more than music, he said. And so what did he suggest to do? 
He said, look, if you find your soul being stirred by music and it rousing your passions, analyze it to death. Break it down to its constituent parts with your mind until finally you've lost the love of the music itself. By the way, this is a great threat to, uh, to pastors in a different manner, by the way. So there's nothing wrong in studying music, nor is there no- nothing wrong in studying the Scriptures, but it can certainly be the case in which you break it down so much and analyze it so much that you lose the vision of the whole and therefore fall, in lo- fall out of love. Whether with music or with the Scriptures, or whatever it might be. Another viewpoint is the viewpoint of the Eastern religions, in particular Buddhism. Buddhism sees human desire as a fundamental problem and the source of all suffering. And so therefore, the viewpoint of Buddhism is to extinguish all desire within yourself. By the way, uh, this idea of Eastern meditation is part and parcel with this viewpoint. You should be aware of that. That that the Eastern view of meditation is, is a way to extinguish desire or passion in the self. Now here's the problem with both these viewpoints. Both these viewpoints really throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's not passion in general which is a problem. It's sinful passion. Sinful desire. You see, to have desire, to have human passions, it's part of having a mortal self. And these are fundamentally in many ways, good insofar as we are creatures. You have within yourself such a strong desire to breathe, for example, that you don't even think about it. It's certainly not evil. Right? There are all kinds of desires that that the Lord smiles upon, the desire to enjoy music, the desire to enjoy the natural world, to enjoy one's children, things of this nature. God smiles upon them. Who would want to lead a life utterly freed from passion or desire? No, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is not ultimately satisfactory. And this is where Christianity comes in with a fundamentally different perspective. So on the one hand, Christianity acknowledges that there are, in fact, desires within us which are hurtful and harmful to us and to others. But also recognizes that our desires and passions aren't fundamentally wrong insofar as we are human creatures. The question is, is by what kind of desire will we be ruled over? We'll be ruled over by sinful desire, which leads to the destruction of ourselves and others. Or on the other hand, Will we be led by a desire to serve God and to serve God by serving others? And that's the question that St. Paul puts in front of us today. He says, you, you are a weapon. And you can be used for great good or you can be used for great evil. Which is it? My hope, my desire for you brothers and sisters in Christ is that you would strive to be used by God in His great battle 
for the sake of our fellow humans. That you would be used by Him for the sake of great good, to build others up in their mortal needs, and especially in their eternal needs. There's a war within your own heart. Whether you will be an agent for evil and unrighteousness, or an agent of good and righteousness, which will win? It will be whichever one you feed. St. Paul says, do not present your mortal selves to sin, but rather present your mortal selves to God. If you present yourselves here to the Lord God, to receive His good gifts of instruction in the Word, of the forgiveness of sins, if day by day you read the Word of God, lift up prayers to the Lord, then surely, day by day, you will grow stronger. You will grow in grace. You'll become a more finely tuned weapon for the sake of our great commander, the Lord Jesus Christ. So make use of the gifts that the Lord gives you. Gladly receive His grace so that you might give grace to others. Gladly avail yourself of His love that you might show love to others. Gladly receive the wisdom of the Holy Scriptures so that your life might be an emblem of wisdom and your tongue be filled with words of wisdom. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us go forward as God's warriors, God's weapons in the fight. So as a conclusion, let us rise and sing the first stanza of Onward Christian Soldiers, number 662. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Let us join the Apostles' Creed on page 207. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, make heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. And today as well, uh, just by way of announcement, we will be praying uh, for our synod and our re-elected synodical president who was re-elected this last week, Matthew Harrison. Holy Father, we praise and thank you for every gift that you have granted us. We thank you that you have given us new life by means of your gospel, which the Spirit has used to rouse us to faith in you. We pray, O oh Lord, that by the leading of your Spirit, we might present ourselves to you as instruments of righteousness, weapons of righteousness, that you would use us for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the source of every blessing, including the blessing of good government. Therefore, we lift up to you our president and governor, our courts and our legislatures, that through their work we may be enabled to lead lives of peace and quietness to your glory. We also especially lift up to you this day all those who put themselves in harm's way for our sakes. Remembering especially our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, our police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs. This day we also especially pray to you on behalf of the son of this congregation, Dean Bartell, who is a sergeant in the Army. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, before a word is on our tongue, you know it all together. Therefore, we lift up all of those who have any kind of special need. Therefore, we lift up to you this day the homeless, the hungry, the hospitalized, and the imprisoned, that you would fill up in them whatever is needful, O Lord. Bless as well all of those in this household of faith and need your special care. Remembering especially your servants, Jim Engelking, Bob Nugel, Bill Wilbert, and Lavella Depry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that you have granted us the Holy Christian Church to nurture us in the one true faith. We thank you that you provide for us pastors and other church leaders. And so therefore, we pray that you would bless President Matthew Harrison with wisdom and skill over the next three years as synodical president. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, whatever else you know that we need, grant us, O Lord, through your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the reception of the Lord's offering. Please remain standing. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us, and you centrally begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, 
Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. You have had mercy on us, and you in your only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly bar them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promise salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who made his cross a life giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament, and my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Take the sin of the world away. Welcome to the table of the Lord. It's your body of Christ given for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you. Body and soul of life everlasting and apart in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true body of Christ given for you. 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 True body of Christ given for you. The 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 true blood of Christ shed for you. 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 
true blood of Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and body and soul to life everlasting depart in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. True body of Christ given for you. 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 True blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul and life everlasting to part in peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. True body of Christ given for you. True body of Christ given for you. True body of Christ given for you. The true body of Christ given for you. 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 The 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 true body of Christ given for you. True blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. The true blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting depart in peace. Peace. Welcome to the table of the Lord. True body of Christ given for you. True body of Christ given for you. True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting to part in peace. Okay. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true body of Christ given for you. The true body of Christ given for you. 
Welcome to the table of the Lord, the true body of Christ given for you. Is our God, sword and shield victorious? Is your eyes on page 211? O oh Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace, for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace. Alive to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning, as now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding through all eternity. Let's pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you His peace. Amen. We continue with the sending Him in Christ alone. It can be found in the supplement folder. It's alphabetized. In Christ alone is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease my comforter, 
I only know here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as jesus died the wrath of god was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me Life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand.